In this module, we'll outline how to put all of the planning elements together into a functional operational plan. We'll discuss the various tools which will assist you to create, monitor, update, and manage the performance of the plan. So, how do we put all this together into a plan? First, divide and conquer. Develop the operational plan group by group. Start by defining the services provided by each group. At a high level, what does this group provide to their constituents, the organization, or their partners? Next, define the initiatives the group would like to undertake in the future. Again, at a high level, what would this group like to provide in the future? Depending on your preference, you may develop the complete operational plans for a single group and then go to the next group. Alternatively, you may develop all of the services and initiatives for each group, then move down the pyramid to goals, then objectives, and finally activities. For each service or initiative, develop a set of goals which, when achieved, will enable the service or initiative to be performed. For each goal, develop a set of SMART objectives which, when completed, will achieve the goal. SMART objectives are Specific. They target a specific area for improvement. Measurable. They quantify or at least suggest an indicator of progress. Attainable. They are designed to assure that the end can be achieved. Realistic. They state what results can realistically be achieved given the available resources. Time related. They specify when the results can be achieved. As an example, by January 9, 2016, complete the Ryan White Leadership Academy with a score of 90% or greater. For each objective, develop a set of specific activities which will lead to the completion of the objective. Everything up to this point is encompassed in the plan phase of the Deming or PDCA cycle we discussed. Next, we'll talk about the Do, Check, and Act slash Adjust phases. Now, as part of the Do phase of the PDCA cycle, for each objective, assign an objective leader to lead the charge and complete the objective, and regularly update the percent complete and status flag. For each activity, assign a team leader and team members, assign external partners, and regularly update the percent complete and status flags. For each activity team leader and team member, you have the option of assigning an FTE or full time equivalent value to reflect the portion of their time they should be spending on a specific activity. This will allow you to track the workload for each system user as well as the total personnel resource investment for the planning elements. Categorization allows you to cross-reference or tag planning elements across the entire organization with a specific set of categories and subcategories. Once categorized, you can search and report on all planning elements meeting a specific set of categories and subcategories. Categorization allows you to identify any gaps and overlaps in services provided across the entire department. Some examples of the categories in the dashboard are FAB domains, standards, and measures, funding types, the essentials of public health and accreditation, sectors and clouds. Just as a note, these categories can be added, deleted, or edited as desired. Assignment of leaders, monitoring progress, and categorization are part of the do phase of the PDCA cycle. This is the actual execution of the plan that we developed earlier. Operational plans, to continue to be effective, must be updated regularly. Once you have your operational plans established in the dashboard, there are several tools to assist you to keep the plans up to date. With automated reminders, you can set up email reminders that will automatically be sent out on a schedule you establish to remind objective and activity leaders that they haven't updated their assigned planning elements in over 30 days, they have activities lagging behind schedule, or they have overdue activities. Another way to audit the user's involvement in their operational plans is to review the objective and activity lead summary portion of the performance management dashboard. Here you can see the last time each user updated their operational plan and the status of their assigned planning elements. In addition to the dashboard screen, the dashboard activity report will allow you to generate an activity audit report for a specific group and its subgroups. This report will show you the last time a user's operational plan was updated and the last activity they performed on the system. 
These audit functions assist in the check phase of the PDCA cycle. Checking the progress of the plan against the established metrics will then allow you to make adjustments to the plan for the next planning cycle. After the planning, doing, and checking phases, you may need to make adjustments to the plan or the execution steps in the plan for the next planning cycle. The adjustments may require additional or different staff and or resources. If the additional resources are not available, it may be necessary to adjust the expectations or performance metrics. In summary, the operational planning process encompasses the following steps. Develop the plan. Execute the plan. Monitor the results and make adjustments to the required processes, resources, or outcome expectations based on the results, and then repeat as necessary. By following these steps, you can develop, execute, and manage an effective operational plan over many planning cycles. This concludes this module in the training series for the dashboard. If you have any questions or would like more information on the VMSG dashboard performance management system, please contact us with the contact information here.